Ashto T27 and ASTM C136 are the standard method of test for sieve analysis of both fine and coarse aggregate. Materials retained on the 4.75 mm or number 4 sieve are considered to be coarse aggregate, while those materials passing the 4.75 mm sieve are considered to be fine aggregates. The grading and maximum aggregate size of an aggregate in a concrete mixture can affect various properties, including strength and workability. This procedure is also used to determine the grading of materials that are to be used as aggregates, or to see if certain aggregates meet proposed specifications. Furthermore, it can be used to determine the relationship between porosity and packing. In this procedure, a set of nested sieves with progressively smaller openings is used to determine the size distribution of aggregates sampled. The size of the field sample should be that which is shown in Ashto T2 or four times the minimum size test sample, whichever is greater. And although the minimum size test sample for fine aggregate is 300 grams, the minimum size test sample for most aggregate is going to depend upon the maximum aggregate size. When sieve analysis, including the material finer than the number 200 sieve, is the only testing being proposed, then the field sample may be reduced to testing size in the field to avoid shipping large amounts of materials to the laboratory. And if the minimum size test sample is over 20 kilograms, then it is recommended that you use a mechanical sieve shaker. When using a mechanical sieve shaker, be sure to set the timer to the appropriate calibrated time. And remember, to avoid degradation of the sample, do not let it stay in the mechanical sieve shaker for more than 10 minutes. When determining the amount of material finer than the 75 micron sieve, be sure to use Ashto T11, standard test method for materials finer than the 75 micron sieve in mineral aggregates by washing, and not Ashto T27, standard method of test for sieve analysis of fine and coarse aggregate. Now that we understand the use and application of Ashto T27, let's quickly talk about the equipment necessary to perform this test before moving on to a detailed performance review. First, we'll need a scale conforming to the requirements of M231, accurate to 0.1% of the test sample. For ASTM, the scale must be accurate to 0.1 grams or 0.1% of the test sample. We'll also need the appropriate sieves as well as an oven with a capable range of 110 plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius. And now a detailed performance review. First, we want to dry our sample to a constant mass. And a quick note about drying. For control purposes, particularly where rapid results are desired, it is generally not necessary to dry coarse aggregate for the sieve analysis test. The results are little affected by the moisture content unless the nominal maximum size is smaller than about one half inch or 12.5 millimeters. We can now nest the appropriate sieves in the order of decreasing size and pour our sample into the top sieve. We can now agitate the sample by hand or mechanical means. Be sure not to overload any individual sieves. Use guard sieves if necessary or test the sample in individual increments. For mixtures of coarse and fine aggregate, split the portion of the sample which is finer than that of the 4.75 mm or number 4 sieve as necessary. 
We now want to sieve the sample until not more than 0.5% by mass of retained particles pass a given sieve with one minute of agitation. After sieving, we want to determine the mass of material retained on each sieve to the nearest 0.1%. Then, total the mass of all individual increments and check that it is within 0.3% of the original sample mass. Now, calculate the percentages passing each sieve to the nearest 0.1% on the basis of the total mass of the original dry sample. Then, calculate the finest modulus and report to the nearest 0 0.01. And finally, report all results to the nearest 1%. Let's now go through an example of these calculations. Let's assume that we've done a fine aggregate sieve analysis, and our original sample weight was 308.8 grams. Also, the fine aggregate sieve analysis requires the following sieves, which are listed here. Let's assume that we've put our material through the sieve shaker, and we've acquired the following masses. There was no material on the 9.5 millimeter sieve. There was 3.2 grams on the 4.75 millimeter sieve, and the additional materials retained you can see listed here. Now, one of the first things that we want to do is total the mass of all individual size increments. Here, when we make our total, we wind up with 307.9 grams of material after sieving. We do this because you may remember that step 9 was to total the mass of all individual increments and check that it is within 0.3% of the original sample mass. And here, if we do the calculation, we come up to 99.7% of the original sample, meaning that we have a valid test and we can now proceed with the rest of the calculations. We can now calculate the individual percent retained on each sieve. For the first sieve, the 9.5 millimeter, there was no material retained. Therefore, the individual percent retained is obviously zero. On the second sieve, the 4.75 millimeter, there was 3.2 grams of material retained. So here, we want to take the 3.2 grams of material and divide it by the original sample weight, which was 308.8 grams, and multiply this number by 100, which gives us 1% retained individually on the 4.75 millimeter sieve. Now on the 2.38 millimeter sieve, we had 46.1 grams of material retained. Therefore, we want to take the 46.1 grams of material, divide it by the original sample weight, 308.8 grams, and multiply this value by 100, which will give us 15% retained on the 2.38 millimeter sieve. And I hope that you can see that these are straight percentage calculations, so let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the numbers down below. The cumulative percent retained is achieved by taking the individual percent retained on any given sieve and adding to it the individual percent retained of all the previous sieves. Therefore, the cumulative percent retained on the 2.36 millimeter sieve would be 16%, while the cumulative percent retained on the 1.18 millimeter sieve would be 33%. And once again, I hope you can see how this works, so let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the values down below. We can now calculate our percent passing. Percent passing is achieved by simply subtracting from 100 the cumulative percent retained. As an example, if 0% were retained on the 9.5 millimeter sieve, then obviously 100% of the material must have passed. And if 1% were retained on the 4.75 millimeter sieve, then 99% must have passed. And again, cumulatively, if 16% were retained on the 2.36 millimeter sieve, then obviously 84% must have passed. 
And once again, I hope that you can see how this works, so let's now move on to specification. Let's now compare our results to ASTM C33 standard specification for concrete aggregates. Section 6 of ASTM C33 defines the grading requirements for fine aggregate. It states that on the 9.5 millimeter sieve, 100 percent of the material must pass the sieve. As you can see with our sample, that is the case. Furthermore, it states that on the 4.75 millimeter sieve, 95 to 100 percent of the material must pass. Once again, we had 99 percent passing and again meet specification. And if you look at the minimum and maximum values for each sieve listed below, you'll see that our sample does meet ASTM C33 standard specification for concrete aggregates. We must now calculate the finest modulus and report this number to the nearest 0 0.01. To calculate the finest modulus, we want to add all the raw values of the column for cumulative percent retained of material which is coarser than the 150 micron sieve and divide this number by 100. So here we wind up with a raw value of 304 and if we divide that number by 100, our finest modulus is 3.04. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would like more information on calculating the finest modulus of both fine and coarse aggregate, then please visit the Blackboard section of this program. And now for your review, the deviations between AASHTO and ASTM. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude AASHTO T27 and ASTM C136. Standard specification for sieve analysis of both fine and coarse aggregate.